I want to talk about something that is um, a new concept, but like I've been emphasizing with uh, this topic, although these are new concepts, um, a lot of it is very familiar, right? And the skills that you will use are again very familiar. It relies um, predominantly on integration um, that you have been doing quite a lot. But I guess the tricky thing is sort of understanding what this actually is. That, that was the biggest kind of barrier for me when I was approaching this topic. And we've learned about something called a probability density function. And the emphasis is that you can calculate probabilities using what you'd normally write as functions, f of x. Yeah? Okay, and the way you do that is you kind of like evaluate these functions or actually you integrate them. Right? So that's the PDF. It allows you to find individual. But remember, we couldn't find the probability of like a single outcome. And the reason why was because now we're dealing with what we call continuous variables, right? So what's an example of a continuous variable? Height. Height, right? Because height, technically, although you measure like 168, you know, 180, right? Technically, you can have even small increments of that. And in fact, that's continuous, yeah? Time is another good example, right? So because of that, you can't find the probability of one outcome. Like, I can't technically, mathematically at least, you can't find the probability that I am 166 because I'm probably not exactly 166. I'm probably some small increment of that. So rather than find the probability of one outcome, we find the probability of an interval of an outcome, right? So you looked at that, maybe you want something between two numbers, right? Now, the cumulative distribution function is also very useful. Now, cumulative, you've seen this word before. Does anyone remember what that means? Yeah. Yeah, adding, um, it's actually uh, like a, a running total is how I like to think about it, yeah. And you've actually seen it in this graph over here, right? Does anyone remember what these are called? Pareto. Pareto charts, right? And Pareto charts have two graphs laid on top of them. They have um, this, which is like a um, you know, bar graph or whatever, um, and it's got the restaurant complaints determined by, they're ranked by um, the percentage of people that said that particular thing, right? So you can see the most important ones over here. So if you're a restaurant, you want to analyze things. Why do people um, complain about us? You know, overpriced or small portions. But this orange line, this is a line graph, and this is our running total. It's a cumulative line graph. And how do you know that? Well, because when you get to the end, what do you notice? It's 100%. Right? So that's the idea behind a cumulative thing. It's a running total of these things. Right? So you can't use this to think about, oh, how much was um, no atmosphere. Right? You can't use that line graph. But what you can do is you can think about it as a running total, and it's useful in other kind of situations. So if you want to address like 50% of the complaints, for example, you could go to where it's 50%, and it turns out it's just like the first one, because that's the biggest one. And that's all you kind of need to address. That's the idea behind um, the just the word cumulative, right? How do we apply it to this situation? Well, let's look at these um, distribution functions, right? And all that is just a fancy word of we're going to represent the probability on a graph, which we've done here, right? This one here, they're all the same. Again, we've seen that before. Do you remember what that's called? When they're all the same probability? Uniform. So there's a uniform probability density function, yeah. What do you reckon it'll look like if I changed it? So basically, we can have a representation where it's the probability density function. That's this representation. But we can also represent it as a cumulative distribution function. So just let me just say that again. The PDF and the CDF, they're two representations of the same thing. Just like with the Pareto chart, right? these are the same situation represented slightly differently. So my question is, if I go back to this, what would this look like if I converted it? This is right now as a PDF. If I converted it to a CDF, not to a Word document, don't worry. So. Can you convert a PDF to a Word doc? Don't know. Probably. Going to do this one. Matt, Maddie, you had an idea? Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Give me more specific. A straight, straight line? Straight line. Straight line? Yeah. Straight line. Straight line? Why, why a straight line, do you reckon? Um, well, if you're adding the same amount, yep. Each, yep. it's just going up by the same. Can you see that? Right? So if you're adding the same amount, because the running total should be, you know, I should be adding all these each time. When I get to 10, what should the value be at the end? What does that mean? One. one. Why one? Good. So in a probability density function, that's one of your um, like properties, right? When you add up all the individual probabilities, um, they do sum up to one. Okay, let's see if that's actually right. And it is. That's exactly what it looks like, right? So that's the CDF. It's the running total, right? All of these here. It is a straight line, as Maddie realized. And if you add up all these values, when you get to the top, yeah, there's one more. <laughs> Uh, you do get to one over there, right? So let's kind of summarize that. Some properties that we want to note down 
Yeah. So um, notice here it's defined on the value from A to B, right? Um, if you're wondering why this is going on here, I'll explain this in one second, right? But f of A, so at the beginning, so the capital re represents the um, CDF. So I'm using a capital, that's the CDF, yep. Whereas the lowercase is the um, PDF. So for the capital on f of A, where it's at the beginning, well, if you're at the beginning, there's nothing there, right? So that would just be zero, yeah. But f of, now b is the end point, Maggie determined, that was just one. Yeah, exactly right, the one. What if I have something like this? R is just any kind of um, constant, right? The idea behind this is that if you have, if you evaluate it at a point, think about what you're going to actually get. What you're actually going to get is, like, if I evaluated f of 6, right, I'm going to get the probability that I get everything less than that. Can you see that? Right? That's why we call it a cumulative one, right? Because if I evaluate f of 6 for the CDF, then I get all of the probabilities added up together that are less than that. So we would say that that's f of x less than or equal to r, where r is like some value that we're finding. So before, right, we were integrating, yeah, and we were putting all this in. But now we have created a function which I can just substitute a value in and get that, okay? Any questions so far?